Got it. Nope, got stuff. It's a lot of rocks over there. Shut okay, ladies and gentlemen, here at Millerton, this is one of my favorite areas to fish. It's right here on the corner, and it's coming around this curve here. And you can see the dam, and you can see the dam is way over there. I'm rocking here on this corner, folks. But this is my favorite location here on this corner. And the water is always moving through here. You have your larger boulders, so it's, it's going down straight into the water. One of the major problems here, it can be very dangerous. And this is one of the areas where my boat started to sink. And the reason is when that, wa that uh, wind is blowing over that dam, is usually whipping through this area. And when you come around the curve there, a lot of times you'll have these jet skiers or whatever uh, coming close to that curve and giving you additional waves and problems. But this is one of my favorite locations to fish is along this edge and you have stripers in this edge and this is where that water is really moving. Okay, this is Hot Rod Shoulders. Let me get back to fishing. All right, can I get a drum roll please? How can that not be the best rock to demonstrate the creepy crawler, folks? Oh. Let's do something. Oh man. Oh shucks. That ain't always the best thing. Cause I don't need rocks. You don't want to be messing around. Mm -mm. Let's see. Alright, there we go into the water. Alright. That was a perfect use of that technique. Yes it was. Let's see if we catch something. All right, fine, ladies and gentlemen, finally. Bring him one in. Okay, let's get him up. Let's uh, try to use the camera and mess this one around. Oh, man, shit, yeah, that's fine. Let me kill the motor. All right, all right, come on. Come on up, little buddy. There he is. All right. It's been a long day out here. Boy, he is chunky. He's not that, um, I didn't think you 12 inches. Hey, hey. But he is fat. Look at that. Oh, chunky one. It's, yuck, it's uh, 1109. So this is only the second one that I've snagged. We'll see what's going on, folks. But it, it's slow here at Milliton. It's, it's not the same. Well, I guess it dragged on. It's the same like uh, Pine Flat. It drags on. I think uh, one problem is probably because of the releasing of the water. But the water is still very high right now. So we're looking good. That's high rise shoulders. Let me get back to fishing. No, that's not. Just pulling. Just drag. Got a good drag though. Good drag. Oh shit! That's why you always retie after you catch a fish. Uh, my hook is gone and worm. Got him, got him, y'all. No. Shut up. Shut up. There we go again. Got him. This time I got his ass. Oh, yeah. He clowned me the other one, y'all. This time I got him. Oh, yeah. Okay, whoo, this is a fatty. All right, folks, this time Hot Rod got him. All right, bring this baby up. 
Okay, there you go. Let's zoom in a little more. Bring this baby up. All right. Ooh, come here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, baby. Ah. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. All right, Gotti. Yes, indeed. Huh? He clowned me, and I got stuck. I went back after his ass. Ah, stop it. All right. That's a nice one. Little fatty. Okay. There you go, folks. Uh, get back in the water. Okay. I caught him on that, uh... Let me get out of this spot. Too close to these rocks. Um... This is the Keeper 1058 crawfish. Um, this water is real murky. It's not all that clear. So, um, using that crawfish and throwing it up into the rocks. Just sort of dragging it out. And it be stuck. All right, folks, I'm on that grind. Get in the camera. Let's see. Yep, I think I missed that bite. He sure went after that one, that purple. Let me see if he wants it anymore. Three o'clock, folks. I think if I've caught four fish all day, I'm lucky. Got him. Got his head. Oh, got him. Got him. Oh, folks, he come off. Shit. He came off. God. Uh, I had him. He, I don't know. It was, nope, they weren't biting anything, so I put on this purple at 1059p and threw it over there. I had him, but uh, he come off. And have him look good, that's for sure. You sure me, me snag, man. My arm feels a little sore, man. I'm telling you, that was a. It must have been a heck of a size fish, because my arm feels my left arm. And that jerky. Yeah. Do to me, fish. Let's see if he still wants that purple. He may not. I mean, that was a heck of a jerk. He, he was on. He was on. He come off, though. All right. Yeah, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, like I said, if I've caught in four fish all day, so... Militant has been a little slow. Um, I think Pine Flat, I probably would have caught a little more. And I think maybe the fish, um, I know back in April, this lake was on fire. And then once the water went down, even though it's come back, um, it probably missed the spawn. That was one thing. Missed a, a good spawn because they didn't have the water. Or they were probably nervous, probably lost eggs as the water dropped. But uh, the lake is full. It's full of water now. But it just seems that the fish, they're just not active. And today is a Monday, so, you know, it's not many people on the lake. I mean, if you see more than 10 boats, that'd be good. But, so it's, uh, it's fairly quiet today. Okay, folks, this is Hot Rod Show. Okay, folks, got another one. Let's see if we can get this one in. These are nice size bass. It's just getting this choker up and in. That's the thing. Let's see. Oh, let's get you, get you down. Give you a shot. Oh, there we go. At least we got him. Okay. He hit that purple. That's 309. Dude, I still wonder. I know when you hit that worm, but where was that plastic worm going? That's up here. That's in that tough part. Let's see. Wow, I got those red tones down in there. You would think. 
think you would have them ready. Oh, there we go. We have a pair of pliers. That'll work just the same. Okay, folks, let me get him back in the water. Little guy. Alright, let me get back over there. Okay. okay, when you've been fishing around this bend all day, and it's slightly calm, that's because you have this mountain blocking the wind. But when you come around this corner, I can tell you, you can feel like all hell is just broken loose. So you have to be prepared. Have everything buttoned down. Um, it was a real windy day when my boat capsized up here about five years ago. I got the boat back, but what it taught me was move the weight up front. You need to keep your bow down, and since I'm using the front trolling motor in the back, um, the front trolling motor is actually bolted down. And that was a mistake I did not have, was the front trolling motor had actually slipped off and the back trolling motor had too much fishing line on it. So I didn't have much of a push when I went around this corner. So right now I've got it uh, moving uh, to be able to take on this wind. Once you get around this corner, it's still a fight uh, till you get close to the dock. Um, I think it's close to about 4.30. I've had enough with fishing. It wasn't much of a fishing day, but I decided to stay out because, I mean, it's good to be out. It really is. All right, folks. Looks like we're going to make it around this corner. So it's just really around this bend that you have to really fight the wind. So if you're in a kayak, uh, you have to remember, it's not going to be an easy trip. And I'm using two trolling motors right now. And like I said, the wind is its coming off of the dam up there. And once it comes over that dam, that wind, I mean, it is moving usually in the afternoon. So, and today is pleasant. What also caused a problem was coming around this bend, you're having jet skiers that are coming close. So they're causing extra wind, and then you have some that want to show out um, boaters that are coming around this corner close so today is fairly easy it's Monday and I don't have much of uh, to deal with the waves from other boaters I'm just dealing with the, the wind but uh, this corner can be very tricky and I ended up I was trying to make it around this corner I was trying to make it around this corner to the sandy beach and I ended up over on the rocks, actually going down. Um, I was sinking in 30 feet of water and I got it in, nosed in, to 8 feet of water. Uh, what really surprised me is that the boat was three quarters of the way full, it was still uh, floating, and the trolling motors were running, even though the batteries were underwater. So that, that is interesting. Okay, this hot rod show is going in. Okay, this is Hot Rod Shoulders. We're going in about 4.48, so you know by the time I get out of the water onto the freeway, I'll be with the maniacs. Um, it was nice today. I mean, it got a little warm. The fish are not really biting. Maybe it's uh, what I was throwing out in the water. I know I went through the... Uh, tackle box. I was trolling about six, seven different lures. I tried the worms and that's the only thing that really I caught the one on the uh, the shad number four which I normally catch a lot of fish in pine flat with but the rest were just on the keeper worm. That's really it. I mean I've trolled a, a lot of different lures and really nothing. So if you decide to come up here to the lake uh, you know this weekend is going to be crowded. Uh, be safe, wear your jacket, and remember it's going to be a lot of recreational boulders here, also jet skis, so you'll have to compete with that uh, in trying to fish. Alright, at least we have an understanding that a uh, 
You can get in and out of Milliton with no problem with your boat. And uh, it's full of water, but the fish, they just don't seem to really be active. It's Hot Rod Shoulders, folks. Be safe and take care. It's time to go. <clears throat> Check out dude got out of start. That must be tribal police right there, huh? Got to be. Hell no, that ain't no tribal police. Dude just tripping, huh? Man. Alright. It's time to go. I think maybe we'll come back next year. Um I think the fishing conditions will be back to normal. It's just this year they sort of got off offset. But we still had a wonderful time. We did. Always remember to stop at that stop sign. I did a double take because I started to roll through there, California. But they will ticket your ass up here. They're looking at that. And make sure you stop at this stop sign. And they're not doing anything wrong. It's the law. Stop at those stop signs. And what it, it said is an indication that, you know, you could be under the influence if you're rolling through those stops. So that's one reason they have a right to check you because you should be stopping at those stop signs. I mean, they're simple. So keep that in mind, folks. Obey the laws and stay out of trouble. It's Hot Rod Shoulders. Be safe and take care.